Hey guys, I'm Aviv, founder of Botero, and uh, today on the next few minutes, I'm gonna talk about the log4j and log4 shell vulnerability, uh, how uh, actually it can affect not just uh, on the network, also affect files and documents and how Botero can help you uh, mitigating log4, log4 shell and some other logic vulnerabilities. So, for those of you who are not familiar with Log4j, uh, Log4j, that's um, one of the most famous logging framework. And logging framework, that's something that uh, uh, we all use in software for event recording. For example, for audit, we want on every step in software, we want to log that user done X uh, using data Y on day Z. And we also using logging for troubleshooting, for example, uh, an unexpected issue happened. Uh, and that's happened when uh, the user were clicking on this or that on date uh, uh, C. And uh, why it's so important? Because that's the uh, basic way for any software uh, in order to be operational over time uh, to make sure that it does what it's actually uh, designed to do. And it's fundamental for every software out there. Uh, so as it's so fundamental, uh, someone invented the frameworks uh, to do the exact same thing. So if any developer can use that uh, freely and easily. Uh, Log4j is actually used in most of the enterprise software today, and so it's really, really uh, widespread. So what is Log4j vulnerability or what is Log4Shell? Uh, if you think about a uh, log uh, line, for example, we want a, a log that a user was trying to log in. So we're going to have this string on the screen. User is trying to log in, and that will result in the actual user name being printed to a log file saying, user of Vivet Botero is trying to log in. Uh, but what that uh, researcher found is that the login framework also accept this special string, start with GNDI. And that's a special protocol that actually fetch additional code or extension from remote server. And that remote server can actually be specified as an attacker control server hosting a malicious payload. So in fact, if you're a user and you type in, for example, it's a username, that special string with the attacker server host uh, and a malicious path, uh, it actually, uh, what it does is actually fetch that malicious code from remote and execute that on the server that run that enterprise software, which is crazy, crazy, and really, really scary. That means a complete takeover in just seconds. <laughs> but um, it's not just the enterprise software <clears throat> like uh, websites that uh, are affected by this. For example, if you have a PDF processing software, let's say you have a client facing portal where you get documents from client and you need to extract data or manipulate a PDF. For example, there is a, a pretty popular uh, PDF library called Apache PDF Box that use exactly for that. So any enterprise software can use that in order to manipulate uh, PDF content. And guess what? That PDF box is actually uh, utilizing Log4j. So uh, uh, thanks to uh, uh, that uh, uh, ELVY from GitHub, you can see the, the source uh, uh, on the bottom of that slide, uh, he found that it's pretty easy to craft a malicious PDF. Uh, and that PDF library, PDF box, uh, it will log any malicious uh, object in that PDF uh, that is missing the correct format. That means that we can actually use a size attribute. Let's say that actually mentioned what is the size of the PDF. And instead of having the size in bytes, we just specify that weird string that will point to the attacker server. And guess what? Once the PDF is being processed by PDF box, boom, uh, the code is being executed. In fact, that PDF that you can see, it looks pretty innocent if you open that with the PDF reader, but using that PDF box library, uh, it's pretty lethal. Um, so what can be done? We in Vitero, as we processing uh, documents, we're reconstructing them to a safe version of the document. So for example, if we encounter anything that is not in the correct format, not according to the specification, let's say for example, size attribute that is not really sized, we would reconstruct that in the safe version of the PDF to the correct size. So we'll fix that as part of the process. Again, we don't need to know that this is a vulnerability, but aligning everything in the document as part of the reconstruction, this is a, a crucial part in CDR and definitely in the product. 
So by taking that uh, uh, malform PDF and generating a safe version of it, which is exactly as the specification defined, we actually can uh, um, protect customers and clients and users from being affected by log for show. And of course, that PDF looks exactly the same, both the original and the sanitized version, the safe version looks and feels exactly, exactly the same. So uh, Voteur's customer actually are protected uh, from any kind of uh, uh, logic or uh, file specification vulnerability out there, uh, including log for shell. Uh, so thank you everyone and feel free to reach out to material.com and uh, we'll be happy to help you to, be, to protect your end users from such attacks.